Okay, so we're ready now for our derivation of the gauss bernay theorem, and we're going to derive it for a smooth, uh, closed, regular curve. We've seen other applications of the gauss bernay where we've had piecewise uh, smooth curves, and we'll generalize the gauss bernay theorem in a special uh, lecture later. Okay, but this is good enough for us to get, to get started, and uh, it's an important derivation, so we'll just take this bite. At the, at, at the moment. Okay, so uh, we, uh, last time we, uh, we got a couple, of, couple of, of, of equations that are going to be useful. We generalized the idea of turning angle from Euclidean space to curved space. And, and we, and we uh, got uh, one, one, of the, one of the theorems in, in, in general that the, the difference of, uh, of the magnitudes of the covariant derivatives of, of two vectors uh, on the on, uh, on, uh, tangent tangent to the surface is uh, gives us the rate of change of the angle uh, between them. Okay, and then we applied this this statement to the special case where we took w to be a tangent to a curve and v to be parallel transported, and then we got a new uh, expression for the for the geodesic uh, curvature. Of, of R of R of S, it's the rate of change of the turning angle, where the turning angle is is uh, is defined as off the angle off a parallel transported uh, vector v. So v gives us a sense of sense of direction as we as we move from one tangent uh, 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 space to uh, uh, to another, and uh, and we measure we can measure angles of of uh, of tangents and other vectors off of that particular, off of that particular direction. Remember, okay, dv by ds is equal to zero. So, so from the perspective of of a, uh, of an inhabitant of the surface, okay, uh, v is constant, right? It has constant components in the tangent plane, so we call it parallel transported, in that in, in that sense. Okay. So now the stage is set for for Gauss Bernay. Okay, and so and so I'll I'll, I'll take our, our general expression here, and I want to apply it in in, in uh, okay in, in in a particular case where I have a, a curve, a closed, simple, regular curve on a surface, and I'm going to put a coordinate mesh on this on the surface. Okay, just so that I can just so that I can uh, calculate very thing, various things in a systematic fashion. At the end of the day, the coordinate mesh plays no role in the gauss bernay theorem. But it, but it provides me, like any coordinate system, with, uh, 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 with measurements and, uh, and angles and such, so I can do systematic uh, calculations. Okay, so let's do that. We'll call the, we'll call the coordinate mesh UV, and we'll choose a coordinate mesh which will be orthogonal. Okay, so I can, I can always make such a choice on my, on my surface. I can jigger the directions, uh, okay, on my, on, my, on my surface, and... Uh, and, and make sure that uh, that capital F is equal to zero. That is, I choose a metric, okay, where the cross term is equal to is equal to zero. I have expressed that over here. Okay, so uh, so I'll take the the, the uh, theorem from last time and I'll and I'll apply it. I'll let this holds for any R and W uh, that live in the tangent planes. I'll take W to be the tangent to the curve, okay, and I'll take V to be one of one of the direct on one of the uh, directions on the mesh, okay. So it's uh, uh, drdu, okay, drdu like that, okay. And then okay, and then like I say, I'll choose a a a, uh, a mesh, and I'll label it with unit vectors e1 and e2, okay. So so my my mesh is uv, and so I have a tangent vector in. In, in one direction, r sub u, okay, and then I'll normalize it, okay. Remember, e is the normalization of uh, uh, when I take the square root of the vector r sub u. E is r sub u dot r sub u. Taking the square root normalizes this fellow, and I get a normalized, that's convenient, uh, vector labeling that direction. That direction changes as I move around, of course, but it's normalized. And then I do the same thing in the in, uh, with the variable v, in that case dividing by uh, square root of g to keep it normalized. And I'm assuming that my 
my uh, my mesh is is orthogonal, so f is equal to is f is equal to zero. If I have e1 and e2 on the surface, then I know how to make the normal. Just take the cross product. Okay, so e1 cross e2 is the normal, like that. All those guys are are, are uh, orthonormal. Okay, so then my theorem from last time is then written down written down like this. Okay, so now I I, I know how my magnitude of the tangent vector changes. It, uh, as I move along, it gets two contributions. Okay. The, the rate of change of the of the of the angle phi between b to, between it and a parallel transported vector, okay, and uh, and the rate of change of of, of, of e one the, in the in the tangent plane, okay. So I want to write all this out in the U V mesh, okay, and so on the right hand side then I've got to take a look at this covariant derivative, okay, okay. okay. So, so the, the magnitude of that of, of that uh, covariant covariant derivative, it, it's just uh, the ordinary uh, derivative of, of e1 uh, dotted dotted into into the appropriate direction. Okay, well, uh, the, the the appropriate direction. This is a covariant derivative. It lives on the tangent plane. Okay, and it has to be perpendicular to uh, to e1. Okay, E1 maintains its magnitude as I differentiate it, so the derivative is going to be perpendicular to E1, and of course it's perpendicular to the normal because this is a covariant derivative. So the observations I made before, and I, it allows me to write it down. Okay, so, so I have a direction uh, E1 on, on, on the surface, a direction E2, and the cross product is N. Okay, but then you see N cross, the, cross E1 well, what does that give me? We'll just take the cross product. You see, it gives me e two, so I can so I can simplify this expression. Okay, and so I've written it down like that. Okay, now the derivative, the rate of change of e one along the curve t can be written in terms of gradients along the mesh. I just use the chain rule. Okay, and that's what I've done here. So the rate of change of e one in the t direction is the rate of change of e one in the u direction times the rate of change of u in the t direction, and then plus, okay, what, uh, for movement in the v direction. So plus uh, dE1 dV, dV by dt. So that's, th that's, just the, that's just the chain rule. That's just the chain, just the chain rule, and I, I'll find it right here. Okay. So, okay, and so now I have, I have uh, these objects to, uh, to contend with. Uh, let's see. So I have the rate of change of one unit vector in the u direction dotted into the uh, into the other direction. Okay, and I just write that stuff out in terms of my metric. Okay, remember e1 is just r sub u normalized. I have to differentiate it in the u direction and then dot it into e2. Well, e2 is is r sub v normalized uh, like that. Okay. And so and so let's uh, and and so let's take the dot product and I do the dot product and I see that my result is the rate of change of the of the first uh, component of the metric differentiate with respect to v and then the other factors coming along and I pick up a minus a half in doing this. Okay. Now what I've done here is I've noticed on the side okay that the rate of change of e in the v direction is nothing but minus two. Uh, R U U dotted R V. That's the combination I get over here, right? That's the that's the combination I I, I, I find uh, on the on the left hand on the left hand side, okay? And so uh, that's what that's what I have to identify. And uh, and you know so I just go back. I, I, I do the the type of calculation we've done several times already. E is just R U dot R U, and I want to differentiate it with respect to V. Okay, okay, and so and so I do that. I think to prove this one, just take the statement that r u dot r v is equal to zero. Okay, differentiate that with respect to uh, with respect to u. Okay, and then you'll quickly find out this uh, this identity. So so do that on your own. Uh, just just uh, just just check me there, and uh, and we'll be fine. Okay. And then similarly, I have I, I have the second term coming from the chain rule. To, uh, 
here, and I and I see that those that collection of, of a derivative of uh, of a uh, of a coordinate direction with the other coordinate direction is a half the rate of change of g in the u direction divided by e g. Okay, so uh, so so there we are. We're all uh, we're all set. I can I can then collect up those terms. Okay, o over here and get it uh, a useful expression for the magnitude of the covariant de derivative of E1 in the, in, in the t direction. That's what I need, okay, to go into this expression to uh, make progress toward the Gauss-Bernay theorem. And that's what, that's what I do. Okay, so, I, so then I've just collected up those two terms, and, and there you go. Okay, now I'll specialize to the case where my parameter for the curve is the arc length, because if it's the arc length, then I know that the left-hand side is simply the, uh, the geodesic uh, curvature, kappa g. Okay, okay. So then I have a, a, a curious-looking equation. I have kappa g equals to this stuff plus d phi by dt. If you look back in, at, at uh, lecture one, you'll see we did a similar exercise in the plane. The plane is flat, and so these terms were not there, but we did learn that kappa, okay, the curvature of a, vector, of a, curvature of a curve was related to the uh, rate of change of, 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 the, of the turning angle. Okay, and now I'm just generalizing that, and I see I get a new contribution, okay, in, into this equation because the surface is curved, okay, and that's, and that's the character of it right there. Now, for the Gauss-Bernay theorem, I want to take this expression and integrate it around a closed, simple, regular path. So it's a path that has an inside, inside uh, region called R, and the curve itself is called C. So I, that's all I've done here. I've just taken the left-hand side, integrated around the curve, integrated around the curve, integrated around the curve. Okay, now I look at this, at this uh, creature here, and it looks a little bit um, intimidating. Uh, but I can work on it, okay? In fact, I think to, it's, a, it's a line integral around a closed curve. I can apply Green's theorem, okay? So I remember Green's theorem from my vector calculus. It tells me that I can, I can calculate this line integral in terms, of a, in terms of an area integral if I take these derivatives as shown here, okay? So let's apply, let's apply it here, identifying A Oh, A and B with these two with these two terms, okay, and so uh, and, and so here it is. Here's the left hand side of Green's theorem written out, and on the right hand side, identifying uh, B and A. I see I have to take a derivative in the u direction minus a derivative in the v direction. There's already already a minus sign here, so the relative signs of the two terms is plus, and I get and I get uh, the, this expression here. Well, that's great. Now, just look back, look back at our derivation of, uh, of Gauss's excellent theorem, and you see, in fact, what you have in, in front of you is just the Gaussian curvature, K itself. This expression in brackets is just, is just Gaussian curvature times the square root of E times G, components of the metric. Okay, oh, and then, then finally, I can write this in terms of, of, of um, Geometric quantities, because the square root of eg, du dv, is just the surface area element, dA. Okay. So that takes care of that term. This other term here, well, well, if I go all the way around the curve, okay, then my tangent uh, vector rotates through through two pi relative to a parallel transported vector. Okay, and so I get two pi on the right on the right hand side. Okay, so. Okay, so I have, uh, okay, and, and so, okay, and, and so I have, I have Gauss's, I have the Gauss-Bernay theorem, that the, uh, the, the line integral of kappa g around the curve plus the uh, surface area of the of integral of the, of, of the Gaussian curvature inside, inside the region, it's inside because that it inherits that from the character of Green's theorem, Green's theorem relating uh, a line integral uh, around a closed uh, regular curve to the to the area 
integral inside it like that gets gets become gets gets becomes this. So I should write this as a, a line integral around the curve. This should be this should be the uh, integral area uh, integral over the region R. I should have written R here, not S. Sorry about that. And then on, on the other side, I have uh, I have two pi. Okay, and that's uh, and, and that's what uh, and that's what uh, I wanted. Okay, so now we have this we have this this relation. It's the famous Gauss-Bonnet theorem. Okay, and uh, it has an enormous amount of impact in, in mathematics because it opens up the door to uh, other other fields, in particular in particular topological properties of uh, of surfaces. A correlation between between the uh, the geodesic curvature and the and the Gaussian curvature in, in a region of the of, of, of the surface. We've seen applications where where our, our, our curve was was a geodesic, so that this term didn't 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 appear, and then we had statements relating uh, the, uh, the Gaussian curvature. Okay, so. What we're going to do instead of instead of pursuing those applications and, and developing this further now is we're going to leave that to a to a special lecture on the on the Gauss Bonnet theorem and we'll discuss uh, a little bit about global topology and we'll generalize uh, the, the Gauss Bonnet theorem to surfaces of, of, of arbitrary arbitrary shapes. We'll take a look at the we'll take a look at the Gauss Bonnet theorem for uh, surfaces with handles. Okay. And we will relate the, uh, the this integral to the uh, genus of the surface, okay, and the Euler index, and and we'll we'll just leave that for a later for a later application because we want to keep moving with new concepts in differential uh, geometry. So we'll be we'll be moving on now, uh, okay, to uh, uh, geodesics, geodesic uh, equations, and. Uh, uh, geodesic deviation for a general surface and uh, holonomy. So let's uh, pick that up next time.